Hey YouTube, I thought I'd make a little bit of an update on my uh, sign. I don't know if you can see it in there, but this is the, the highest part I can put wood in. You can see the kiln's half full. That's all red oak in there drying. And the other side has none on yet because I didn't start cutting for that side. So I have the fans and stuff running today inside there and you can see there was the moisture that's on the uh, <clears throat> um, polycarbonate and that's on the inside so I have the vents opened up in the back and I'm running the fans to try and get rid of some of that moisture uh, normally the moisture is around 40, uh, 38 35% in there and the temperature during the summer here has been above 80 right now it's a little low we had a bad rainstorm last night and uh, the temperatures are lower probably around I don't know, maybe 68, and the uh, humidity is real high. But that's not the purpose of the main video. The main video that I want to show you is uh, sharpening these uh, bandsaw blades on the saw. Now I've seen a lot of guys sharpen these, make all kind of rigs, jigs, and everything else, and I think, personally, that's a lot of nonsense. So I'm going to show you what I do. And I think that a lot of the stuff that the guys do is brought on by people saying you should do this, you should do that, mostly from the manufacturers of the blades. Alright, so there we have the saw blade. And what I'm going to show you is quite simple. If you're old like me, get your reading glasses on because you're going to need them. So I have a couple of files here. Now you want some good files as far as new. This project source, I think I got these either at Lowe's or at Tractor Supply. They're fairly cheap. They're probably made in goddamn China like everything else is, but they do cut. And a small file like this, what is that, like a three-quarter by, I don't know, six-inch file? The handle's nice on there. And then a round rat tail file, something that you would use for, like, chainsaws or maybe a little bit thicker. Well, actually, that's a rasp. This is the file. This is my chainsaw file. So something like this. Now, you don't necessarily have to have this round one, but it's good to have. Now what I found out was when you put, let me just turn this thing towards me here. What I found out is if you put a straight edge on, on these teeth, yeah, if you put a straight edge on these teeth, you'll find that one tooth is turned that way and two teeth are turned down. One tooth is turned up, one, two teeth is turned down. Now, I don't know the, the total purpose for that, but I'm sure that the engineer who sat down with his little calculator could figure out why that has to be that way. And I'm not questioning that. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of scotch bright, clean off the blade a little bit, especially where the wood is a, kind of embedded. Not exactly embedded, but sticking hard. Just a little wipe just to clean it off. I also clean these rollers off on both sides along the face that the uh, blade rides on. <clears throat> and um, when it comes to sharpening them, I sharpen chainsaws, a lot of chainsaw blades, and I just use my thumb to feel how t sharp it is. Now, I definitely can feel the difference. The uh, fingerprints in your fingers can actually get stopped by the saw blade. I'm pushing that way on this and it's stopping my finger. This one rolled over. <clears throat> so all I do is take the file, sharpen the inside hook first. Now you're going straight up and down. You're not trying to make any fancy angles or nothing. Go straight up and down because the set that's automatically in there is what's going to straighten out the, or make the teeth cut, you know, the, the wider curve. And then when you go to cut down here, you'll see the tooth inside the hook here is black. When you make your first cut, if you've cleaned the entire surface off, then you're going the right way. So I just do that a couple of times and feel the cut. If that thing grabs a hold of my fingernail, or my finger print groove, I go to the next one. So just straighten that out. What I'm doing here, what I'm doing inside the hook is this has rolled over a little bit from all the cutting it's rolled over so what you want to do is you want to get that metal off of there so I just kind of go straight 
straight in line with the blade. Go up and down a couple times. Find this blade. Like I say, when you run the, the blade, the file down one time, if you've cleaned the entire tooth off, the width of the tooth, then you know you're in the right angle. If the top of the thing has paint on it or coloring and the bottom has coloring, then you're not doing it right. So you want, when you run over that one time like that, you want to make sure that you're hitting the tooth in a, in a straight cut. So that's good there. Again, the next one held in the file straight in both directions. I just want to round off that, or cut off that excess metal that came in there, and then I'm just going to straighten this out here. Now, I'm sure that with all the guys who have taken hours of work to invent all kinds of blade cutter things for this, sharp or blade sharpening tools are going to not like this video. But the facts are the facts. I sharpened this blade about, uh, oh, I don't know, a week ago. And I haven't been cutting steady with it because I have other things to do. But I cut six oak trees about 16 inches in diameter. And I cut three birch that were about 12 inches in diameter. And it cuts right through them. As fast as I can push this freaking saw, it'll cut through that. As long as you give it a little bit of water. To, what I do is I run the blade with water before I go into the wood to clean the blade off. And then I shut the water off and use that to, to run through the wood. As long as you have the power on all the way and your motor's running good and all, I have had no problems cutting wood with this blade after I've resharpened it this way. Again, you know, you can do whatever you want. This works for me, and that's how I'm doing it. So, all I'm doing is I got the blade on here. I got the blade tensioned. All I'm doing is using these wheels to turn it then. So, I'm just going inside the hook. And I'm fixing the point of the tooth. I'm not caring about any kind of shape in there or anything else. It's already there, so I don't have to worry about it. As soon as I get that a little knurled over, rounded over piece off of there, I go up, I go down here, say three times. Now the thing is, like I said, what's important is that when you go along there the first time, if you're not cleaning that whole tooth off, you need to adjust whichever way. If the bottom has some uh, black on it or rust or whatever color this has become and that means you're holding the uh, file this direction you need to straighten it up if the top has it on you're holding the file this direction so you want to hold it so that you can see that and let me tell you something um, you may be off perfect if perfection is what you're looking for then go find another video but if you're looking to have a sharp plate and have it quick this is it. So I just run that down there as long as I'm straight. If I can't move my finger through that, which I can, it's hooked, it's hooked right there, then I'd move on. Go in the hook. Go with the direction that the file cuts. Yep. After a little while, you'll get the feel for these. Now, I'm not saying that if you've hit a nail or something and really screwed this up, that it's going to work for you. But here's something else. eBay, I think I paid six bucks. This is an old-fashioned saw setting tool. All you do is put this onto the blade, and it automatically sets it. All you got to do is squeeze the handle. Now, I haven't set this up yet to work, but I'm going to. <clears throat> For right now, I'm just taking the blade as it is, clean it off, okay, just to get some of that wood stuff off of there. And then I sharpen the blade the way I show you. Again, for uh, repetition's sake, you got your glasses on so you can see what you're doing. It. Now, 
how to cut on this, I'll tell you, I don't see no difference in the wood. When I cut the oak, uh, the first part of that pile, I was changing blades every day. I had six blades there, or I have ten blades. I was changing the blade every day, and you know what? It made no difference, and I got a little tired, and I thought, why should I waste all these blades just because somebody else wants to make a dollar sharpening them? So I decided to try it myself, and it's that simple. You don't have to make no jig. You don't have to try to hold this freaking thing. All you got to do is just... Put your level on there, check out the pattern just for knowledge's sake. You can see two down, one up, one up, two down. I don't know why it's like that, I don't care why it's like that. Like I say, the engineer probably has this all figured out and I trust him, that's good enough for me. So, next two, I'm just sliding down that, when I knock the edge off. about it. Now if I can do this like this, anybody can do this. This is not a big freaking deal. You don't have to pay five dollars, three dollars, seven dollars, I don't care how much it is. I didn't pay nothing to get this blade sharpened the first time. And after I sharpened it, like I say, it cut about 12 logs without an issue. Now I did start to have a little problem with it, and I'll tell you what happened, why I'm sharpening this. It's not because the blade was actually dull. It's because what happened was I was cutting a narrow board very high and I had it dogged only at the very bottom. And the board actually went on an angle and caused the blade to go down into it. Now that twists these blades a little bit. But you know what? These blades twist anyway. I mean, you can see that I'm twisting that by hand from there to there and all the tension's on it. So the blade can give a little bit. All right? So, <clears throat> again, all I do is clean the blade off a little. Just watch your hands, because they are sharp, especially after you're done with them. Just clean that off a little bit. Take a good file. You want a good file. If the file if the file's not cutting, then get yourself a better file. These things are cheap. I think I paid ten bucks for like six or eight files from freaking Chinese. Again. sharp go on to the next one so anyway that's my little video on how to sharpen this thing also um, because of the water that goes on there you want to try and clean up you want to try and clean up the saw every now and then because the sawdust builds up you can see like there's some sawdust in there different places in here the water and stuff has caked it up there it doesn't seem to hurt the blade at all because of the way they have this thing designed. It does seem to hold the dust away from everything that's important, but I think that this sawdust will also help to make things rust sooner. So you may want to think about that. You know, clean up around the belt, the bearings and stuff. But other than that, I've been really happy with the saw. I've had no problems with this saw at all. Um, I just... I can't talk enough about it. The wood miser, I think, is the best thing going, in my opinion. So if you're like me and you don't like giving away your money, try to sharpen in the blade. Just one. You know, ain't gonna hurt you. Sharpen one blade like that and you let me know in the comments if you didn't do a good job with that thing because it seems easy enough. Ah. So anyway, guys, have a good one. I want to get this blade finished. It does take a little while. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.